Hello, I'm Graham and welcome to Fossil Arcade. A few months ago, I reviewed the Astro City Mini. I think this is one of the best mini consoles you can get with 37 built-in games and these really cute arcade controls. The main detractor was the price. As a Japan exclusive product, importing this cost a lot of money. And if you wanted to play multiplayer, which is the main appeal of these arcade games, you needed to buy some proprietary controllers which only work with the Astro City, which increased the price even more. On top of those starter accessories, you could also get the complete arcade experience by buying a full-size Astro City stick, which not only cost just as much as the Astro City itself, but only worked exclusively with this console. So, here it is, and here's another one. Why would you buy two full-size arcade sticks that only work with one mini console? Well, the main reason is for modding. But before I get into all of that, let me tell you what you get straight out of the box. So this cost about £127 to import from Amazon Japan, which is more than the Astro City itself, and you can only order one at a time to prevent scalping. But straight out of the box, you can already tell it's a very quality arcade stick. This faceplate is metal, feels very high quality. The stick and buttons are all Sanwa, so you know they're high quality, built to last. And the plastic body is actually from the same resin as the original Astro City arcade machines. The stick is square gate, which matches the style of the games included on the Astro City Mini. And the USB cable is roughly the same, although a little bit shorter than the D-pad controllers, but it's definitely long enough that you can get some decent distance between you and the television. But if you're paying 120 something pounds for this, it's really for the branding. It's for that Sega Astro City branding. Because for the same price, if not a little bit less, you could get yourself a RAT5 arcade stick, which has PC and console compatibility and a lot more functionality in its buttons and other features. This you're getting either because you're desperate to play the Astro City Mini with an arcade stick, which is totally fine if that's what you want to do, swallow the price tag and have fun, or you're into this look and this style and you're looking for a stick that you can mod. Arcade sticks in general are very easy to modify, but this, more than any other that I have owned, is incredibly easy to take apart. Once Sega have got your money, they don't care what you do with it, and after seeing the internals of this stick, it's like they're inviting you to modify it. So what do you actually need to do to modify this stick? Well, getting inside is actually really easy. The back plate comes off with a simple Phillips head screwdriver and the front plate comes off with a T10H screw bit. Very easy to get hold of. Assuming you want to open this up to all of your consoles, you'll need to get a Brook Universal Fighting Board. This is also quite expensive, costing about £90 each, but it will give your stick functionality with all major consoles and PC. If you're putting in a universal fighting board, you'll also need to replace all of the wiring, which requires a 20 button and stick harness, which is compatible with the new circuitry, while the original wiring is not. Fitting this is the only time you can really screw up the mod, but it's still incredibly easy to do. The first thing you want to do is remove all of the original wiring. What I did was place a very thin flathead screwdriver between the pins and the quick releases and just give it a little turn, and the quick connects will just pop off. And it's actually a very satisfying feeling as they pop off. Get all of those original cables out, including removing it from the stick and the PCB. And you may as well unscrew the PCB and remove that at the same time. Of course, when you remove this PCB, you're going to be removing all of the wires, including the USB cable, because that's just your power supply. And it should go about saying that you leave that USB cable removed from the stick and any consoles until you're done. Replacing that USB cable should be the last step that you do. Once you see the original PCB that's inside this stick, you wonder what you paid for, honestly. I know that the body and the stick is all part of the cost, but like this, there's like, there's nothing. There is nothing going on here at all. When fitting the Universal Fighting Board, there was only one point I could find where I could screw it back in using the original screw points. But that's actually fine, because once you put in the 20 pin connector and reapply the backboard, it's going to push everything together and hold it in place. So I'm not worried about it slipping around. It's actually quite secure in there. 
When connecting the new wire harness to all of the original buttons and stick, there's only a couple of things you need to make sure you get absolutely right. I followed a guide on Reddit, which was posted by Hype36R Max, which I'll link in the description below. That included a graphic to help you connect each wire to the correct corresponding button, but I'm also going to place some of my own graphics on screen to hopefully make it very, very straightforward. The first complicated thing to do, and you probably do want to do this first whilst your cable is loose and not connected to anything else, is reorder the wires on the stick harness. These come in an order which is not compatible with the Astro City stick orientation. Basically, if these wires are not ordered correctly, your up, down, left and right are going to be in the wrong place. So you want to reorder them the way I'm showing on screen. It can be quite hard to get these metal pins out at first, but what I did was just push them from the inside using a very, very small flathead screwdriver. And once they had a little nudge in the right direction, you could very easily sort of pull them the rest of the way. And as long as you put them in in the right order, when you connect this to the stick inside the Astro City, your up, down, left and right will all be correct. The next thing to do is to connect all of the corresponding colour wires to the correct buttons. It's actually deceptively simple. All of these buttons have a corresponding name, start, select, punch, one, two, three, kick, one, two, three. All you've got to do is match the wires to the correct button. And if you do it incorrectly, it just means your kick might be in the wrong place and you've got to go in there and move a wire. As well as connecting all of the coloured wires to the buttons, you also need to connect a ground to every button as well. Any black wire on this harness is a ground, and it doesn't matter which one goes to which button. Just connect all the grounds in the most simple way you can, but don't leave any button without a ground wire. When placing the buttons back in and screwing this shut, you're actually going to want to bend over the pin connectors a little bit because they'll now be a little bit taller thanks to this cable harness. It's fine to, to bend them and as long as you don't go back and forth loads and loads and loads they're not going to snap off. They're designed to be bended and they're going to need to be bended otherwise it's not going to shut up again. So once you have all of your wires connected correctly you'll have a few left over. Clearly this stick has fewer buttons than some others and it's absolutely fine to leave those wires hanging loose or you can add some more buttons of your own, which is something I'm going to come to later perhaps. But once all of your wires are connected, you just need to place the 20 button harness into the PCB and then you're ready to put the USB cable back in there and see if everything is working correctly. When you reconnect the original USB cable to the new Universal Fighting Board, you'll see that the USB cable that comes with the Astro City is a five pin harness, whereas the Universal Fighting Board only requires four pins to be connected. This is because the USB cable for the Astro City is double grounded. You'll see two black wires on one end of the harness. So when you plug in the original USB cable into the Universal Fighting Board, make sure that last black cable is not connected and all the other four cables are connected. If you connect both grounds and power this thing up, you could short circuit the PCB and totally wreck it. It's a good idea to plug in your Astro City stick and check that everything's wired up correctly before you start screwing things back in. Because if you've made a mistake, you can go back in and, and move a cable around. But do be careful whilst it's active. Don't be touching the wires inside whilst you're testing it on a console. Now that the mod is complete, when booting up a console or connecting the stick to a console, you're going to have to hold down the correct corresponding buttons to let the stick know which system it's connected to. I'll put a link in the description below uh, on details on how to do that. But basically when connecting to the Astro, I have to hold down P1 and K1 to make sure the stick knows, oh, I'm in Astro City mode. And that's the same configuration for the Mega Drive Mini as well. So why did I decide to do this twice, considering how expensive it is? Sticks, £125 each. Brook fighting board, £90 each. Wire harness, £15 each. This is now over £400 worth of arcade stick. Frankly, I did this because I was bored. And I was really bored. I was so desperately bored, I just needed a project to do. And the main reason I'm making this video is not so much to review these sticks or even to tell you how to do this specific mod. The main thing that's on my mind is to say that if there's something 
in gaming or your hobby of choice where you think, oh, I really want to do that, but I don't think I could, maybe just do it anyway and give it a go. Because this is a very easy thing to do, but it's the kind of thing that not so long ago in the past I would have looked at and thought, that's not for me. It's expensive for one thing, yes, but the risk of getting it wrong and, and incurring more cost or, or doing something that, you know, break something, no, 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 I don't want to do it. And that anxiety of not wanting to try something because you could do it wrong is, is, is valid in a lot of ways. But also, it's worth giving it a go. Even if you make some mistakes along the way, I cut my finger at one point. You know, I'm so proud of having done this, even though I know how simple and easy it was. These are personalized sticks now, these are my sticks. I wanted to have two so that when me and my friends play these games together, we have the exact same controls and everything is uniform and, and looks great. In videos where me and Alex are playing arcade games together, we're going to be using these sticks and it's going to be a great time. How did I finance this? I had a few rare games just sitting on a shelf, not being played, and I just thought I could sell those and give myself something really enjoyable to do and at the end have something very tangible and long lasting to enjoy. And that's really what I'm recommending, more so than these sticks is that in your chosen hobby, don't be afraid to just try something, you know, do, do something a bit like this and it's really, really satisfying.